today we'll be learning about exponents so this topic will lead us to learn more about logarithms so let's first start off by deriving the properties of exponents so what's an exponent an exponent is basically another word for power so for example 2 power 2 this 2 becomes the exponent 2 power 8 this 8 becomes the exponent is the power so this 2 is the base in mathematical terms and this 8 is the power or the exponent so basically that's what it is for exponents it's a very easy topic um, so it really won't be that difficult for you all so let's start off with the properties of exponents so suppose if we have something like 2 power 2 times 2 power 4 this is basically 4 times 16 which is equal to 64 64 can also be expressed in terms of 2 power something 64 is actually 2 power 6 so if I do 2 power 2 times 2 power 4 I get 2 power 6 now what do we notice here we notice that the 2 and the 4 essentially they add up to get 6 therefore one rule for exponents is if you have a a is the base power b times a power c your answer is actually gonna be a power b plus c so in this case my a is 2 and here also a is 2 it will always be same my b is 2 here also as the power and my c is 4 so the answer is actually gonna be a power b plus c so in this case it's 2 power 2 plus 4 which is 2 power 6 so this is one rule which uh, you should remember moving on if we have something like 2 power 5 divided by 2 power 3 what are we gonna get here 2 power 5 is 32 divide by 2 power 3 that's 8 32 divided by 8 is 4 4 can also be expressed as 2 power something which is 2 power 2 so what do we notice here again we notice that the powers again they actually subtract 5 minus 3 gives us 2 therefore 2 power 5 divided by 2 power 3 is equal to 2 power 2 from this we can make another rule if you have a power b divided by a power c you actually get a power b minus c so my a is 2 my b is 5 my c is 3 and b minus c is 5 minus 3 which is 2 this applies to anything so suppose if i had something like 3 power 6 divided by 3 power 4 my answer is gonna be 3 power 6 minus 4 which is 3 power 2 you should always know this and one more thing to make sure that this law applies is that this base it always has to be the same so if some if something like 2 power 5 divided by 3 power 2 you won't be really you won't be able to use this law because the 2 and 3 are not the same you need the a to be the same so they're not the same so you can't use that formula now suppose if you have something like 3 power 2 power 2 so this is same as 3 squared which is 9 9 power 2 which is 81 again we can express 81 in terms of uh, 3 power something because 81 is actually 3 power 4 what do we notice here we notice that if we have an exponent so this becomes the exponent the whole thing the 2 is the exponent in this case so if we have this powered of something else you actually multiply these two things so we have 3 squared 
the whole thing squared. So it's going to be 3 power 2 times 2, which is 3 power 4. That's another rule which you need to remember. So if you have something like a power b, the whole thing power c, your answer is actually going to be a power b c or a power b times c. So this answer is actually supposed to be 3 power 2 times 2. So if I have something like 5 to the power of 5, the whole thing to the power of 5, my answer is going to be 5 to the power 5 times 5, which is 5 to the power of 25. So this is another rule which you need to remember for this topic. Suppose if you have something like 5 to the power of 2 divided by 5 to the power of 2. How will you do this? This is very similar to 25 divided by 25 which is equal to 1. That we know. Now the previous formula I just discussed is if you have A, both of these are A, this is B and this is C. I mean in this case although B and C are the same, we'll have, we, we can treat them differently. So this is the same as 5 to the power of 2 minus 2. 5 to the power of 2 minus 2 is actually 5 to the power 0. And previously we just did 25 divided by 25 and 25 divided by 25 is equal to 1. Therefore 5 to the power of 0 is also equal to 1. So we can apply this in any other type of situation. Suppose if we have um, 3 power 3 divided by 3 power 3. That gives us 3 power 0. And 3 power 3 is 27. So 27 divided by 27 gives us 1. So from here also, we can conclude that 3 power 0 is equal to 1. So what do we notice here? We notice here that any number power 0 is going to be equal to 1. So this formula you should also know. If you have a power 0, you get 1. a can be any number. So a is any number. So even if you have something like 0 0.284 to the power of 0, you'll still get 1. Anything power 0 is always 1. So this is one formula you should always keep in mind and you should always remember this. Now these formulas which I will write are purely defined by definition. Uh, I don't know any way on how we can actually derive them. So these ones you should essentially just understand them. So if you have something like 2 to the power of negative 2, this is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 2. So you have 2 power negative 2 is you just have to make 1 the numerator divided by this thing. So basically the minus sign makes it a fraction. So this is equal to 1 over 4. Similarly, if you have something like 3 to the power negative 3, it's going to be 1 over 3 cubed, which is 1 over 27. If you have 4 to the power negative 2, you have something like 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. So this is one formula which you need to remember by definition. So the formula goes like this. If you have a to the power of negative b, your answer is 1 over a power b. This is one thing you need to remember by definition. So this is one formula which I really don't know a way on how you can derive it. So it's best you can memorize this by definition and understand this. The next formula is a bit complicated. Suppose if you have something like 3 power 2 over 3. How will you do this? you actually have to get the cube root of 3 and then you square your answer. So this is a bit complicated. So if you have a fraction as the power, the denominator of the fraction, which in this case is 3, so the denominator will be the root. So it's cube root. So it's the third root. Suppose if this was 2, then it will be the second root or the square root which we know in general terms. So this 3 is the denominator and this becomes the square root. So always remember that. The numerator will become the power. So the denominator is the square root, numerator is the power. So this is one another rule which you should remember. So if I have something like um, 16 
to the power a half how will i do this so because i said that the denominator will be the square root will be the root this denominator is 2 so essentially i'm finding the square root so this is the same as this so i have square root of 16 power 1 because this is the numerator so this becomes a power denominator becomes a square root so what's the square root of 16 square root of 16 is 4 so it's just going to be 4 power 1 which is equal to 4 so this is another rule which by definition you should remember um, and this is how it goes so if you have something like a to the power b over c so b over c is the power and that's a fraction so this is equal to the c root of a to the power b so the numerator is the power and the denominator of the fraction c becomes the square root becomes the root actually so this is one formula which you should remember by definition and uh, once you remember this then i feel that you can do any exponent sum and it'll be pretty easy so for something like 27 over 8 to the power of 2 over 3 how will we do this there are fractions all around so with this law we know that the 3 will be the square root will be the root so it will be the third root or the cube root and then the 2 will be the power so this is the same as the cube root of 27 over 8 the whole thing power 2 now we know that a cube root is the same as something power 1 over 3 by use of this formula as well so for example if we had 16 power half we know we had to get the square root so if you have 16 power 1 over 3 we'll have to get the cube root we'll have to get the cube root because this is basically cube root of 16 power 1 so it's the same thing therefore this is the cube root of 27 over 8 power 2 now we can split this up because this is 27 power 1 over 3 divided by 8 power 1 over 3 the whole thing squared so the so we can basically split it up because it's a fraction and the whole thing is being square is being cube rooted so we so we are able to split it up so this is the same as the the it's the same as 3 because 3 cubed is equal to 27 and this is the same as 2 because 2 cubed is equal to 8 so this is 3 over 2 squared which is equal to 9 over 4 therefore the answer to this is 9 over 4 so i cube rooted the fraction this big fraction 27 over 8 to get 3 over 2 and then I squared the answer to get 9 over 4 so from this we can also get another formula and this says that if you have something like square root of a over b something like square root of a over b this is the same as square root of a over square root of b this is another formula which you should remember there is another formula of square roots saying that if you have square root of a times b this is very similar to square root of a times square root of b it's the same thing so basically square roots you can split them up as long as you have square roots on both sides so these are the other formulas which i feel you should remember so that it becomes very easy for you to solve questions like this in the future